मैं डॉक्टर आरिफ अहमद हाजिर हूँ एलर्जी की जानकारी के साथ और आज हमारा आठवा एपिसोड है बट टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन फूड एलर्जी एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट ऑफ अ थ्री एपिसोड ऑन फूड एलर्जी एंड फॉर दैट वी हैव डॉक्टर मारिया अ फ्रेश मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट हुई बी डिस्कसिंग विथ मी ऑन फूड एलर्जी वेलकम डॉक्टर मारिया टू आर शो ऑन फूड एलर्जी थैंक यू फॉर दैट इंट्रोडक्शन डॉक्टर आरिफ I've had the opportunity to go through both of your books Winning Over Allergies and Overcoming Food Allergies. You have covered almost every aspect of food allergy in this book and these books have been written keeping in mind especially the lay person. I have few questions that I would like to ask you. These questions would not only help create awareness amongst people but it would also increase their interest in food allergy. Thank you Dr. Mariam. Go ahead shoot. Thank you Dr. Arif. My first question to you is In these recent years we have seen a huge increase in the prevalence of food allergy. Why do you think that is? To understand a problem we need to go into the history. Human kind did not evolve overnight. We started off as hunter gatherers in the stone age which lasted a million years and then after the stone age came the agriculture age which lasted around say around 20 to 30000 years and during this age we started settling down and growing food. Any guesses about which food we grew because this food is the cause of the maximum problems that we see oh i i don't know um oh is it is it wheat exactly yes is wheat all the other crops such as millets and rice came much later then after the agricultural age we we came into the industrial age which lasted 200 years and during this age we started producing food on a mass scale we had a, a different lifestyle we started storing food and uh food habits also changed and we see a remarkable rise in allergy during this time and in the last 50 years which we refer to as the information technology age there is a complete change in our lifestyle with increased production of foods with increased processed foods with increased uh food additives and colorants wow that's very interesting so how does this transform into allergy the gut which evolved over millions of years to the most natural and the most pure form of food is now being subjected to the most unnatural type of food to the most industrially produced food in the form of additives chemicals and your colorants and how does that cause damage yes if the mother is subjected to these processed and packaged foods during pregnancy and during lactation and the baby especially in the first two years of life then these substances containing additives colorants and preservatives will cross the protective barrier which are there in the intestines so dr arif based on what you have just said would you suggest a complete restriction on processed foods and packaged no not at all it needs to be avoided during the most vulnerable period for the baby that is for the mother during pregnancy and lactation and on for the baby in the first 2 years of life subsequently beyond 2 years of life they can be had occasionally but never on a regular basis because if they're going to be had on a regular basis then there will be problems dr arif you have addressed all the questions i had related to the cause of increasing allergies now coming to the second part of our discussion i would like to ask you a few questions about breastfeeding As you know it's very important for mothers to have awareness about breastfeeding. So I know that you have very strongly advocated for breastfeeding in your book and of course there is no doubt that it is the best and every mother should go for it and it has also been proven that breastfeeding prevents a lot of allergies in those people that are susceptible to it. However if uh, for whatever reason if breastfeeding has not been established in a mother what would you recommend otherwise? in those rare and occasional cases the breastfeeding is not established previously we had a wet nurse but now it is not possible so in such cases you go for milk banking but milk banking is not available to everybody because of cultural reasons or because of economic reasons in such a situation one should go for formula feeding write it all the instructions which are written on the package should be followed strictly there should be no deviation on that instructions which are written on the tin or the box oh and um what about animal milk would you suggest that oh yes if you have a problem about purchasing formula milk or if it is not available then the national institute of nutrition in hyderabad a premier nutrition body in india 
advocates animal milk in the first year of life in the first one month it can be diluted but beyond one one month it should not be diluted and the other important thing is that when you're giving animal milk you should give iron supplements to the baby oh i didn't know that about animal milk thank you so much for enlightening us about that now coming to another part of this discussion i would like to ask you industrialization and westernization of diet and the environment is that the reason for increasing allergies these days oh yes we hardly see any cases of allergies especially food allergies or eczema among indian children who are born and brought up in india but it is quite common among indian children who are born and brought up in the west and this has got to do with the environment the increased westernization and the industrialization of the diet and the environment right okay well i think that just about clears the everything that i wanted to ask you about the factors causing allergy now i would like to ask you can you please clear this misconception that people have what is the difference between food intolerance and food allergy that's a very good question maria and we need to be very clear on that food allergy is an immune mediated system in which the ig antibodies are involved and in extreme cases it can be life threatening while food intolerance is not life threatening in which the immune system is not involved it could be such as lactose intolerance in which there's an enzyme defect or it could be bloating and uh, flatulence because of certain pulses or it could be your food poisoning or in certain cases we have a new or disease which is known as psychological food intolerance in which a person starts you know retching starts vomiting or scratching himself when he consumes a particular food but if that particular food is tested by all the known allergen tests which are available they all come negative for it right okay but dr arif you mentioned something called ige mediated allergy what exactly is that and why is it dangerous ige antibody allergy is the most common form of allergy in which every system of the body is involved whether the gastrointestinal tract or the skin or the lungs or the nose while in a non ige mediated allergy it is only the gastrointestinal tract which is involved like a celiac disease and that is not life th- threatening while ig mediated allergy is life threatening and that is why it is very important oh right okay but i still have one question for you that i don't understand you said that allergy is always to a living substance or to a protein but then how would you explain that we have allergic reactions to preservatives or to food coloring oh you have thrown a googly at me maria all the substances which you mentioned could have been derived from a protein molecule and they may cause rashes and also gastrointestinal symptoms or sometimes it could be only be chemicals in which only the gastrointestinal tract will be involved and there may be no skin reactions in them and but one thing is there these are not like threatening but then if these preservatives and coloring agents if they're not good for health then why does the government even allow them the government can only specify how much is safe in these packaged foods okay but if you're going to consume this on a regular on a long term basis then you're going to invite problems problems like what many almost every system of the body may be affected and you could have problems such as behavior problems and endocrine disorders and then in nowadays one of the reasons are for increasing cancers oh okay all right then um i just have one last question for you how would we test these allergic reactions a simple allergic test would be enough to find out what you are allergic to but there are many other tests available with advancement so we leave it to a next episode as to how to approach a case of suspected food allergy or a suspected food intolerance Well, thank you Dr. Arif. You have really cleared all the questions that I had about the basics of food allergy. I'm really looking forward to our next session next week about the approach to food allergy. This was our 8th episode on allergy and the first of the 3 episodes on food allergy. Aur hame ummeed hai ki aapko hamara aaj ka episode pasand aaya kyunki sare videos banane ka hamara ek hi maqsad hai ki zyada se zyada logon tak allergy ki jankari pahunchaye aur chirag se chirag jalaye. 